Right, uh, my name's Mark Mitchell from Adfil. I'm a technical director. Uh, I've been involved in developing all of these products we're going to talk about today. I'm also a concrete technologist, so I'm a technical manager with a big ready mix concrete company for about 10 years. So I know about concrete, I know about developing fibres, I've also been involved in selling into big products, into big projects, so I know everything. So you can ask anything afterwards. <laughs> Earlier, Ian answered a question about SEMflow, we're using macrofibers. Macro it can actually be done. We've actually developed a system with another, uh, another concrete company. And we're doing, I believe, a 30,000 square metre project uh, somewhere not too far away from here. So it's possible to combine the macrofibers with the flowing concrete. It takes a lot of development, so we've already done that with, uh, with another company. So it's possible to do it. What is fibre reinforced concrete? Well, fibre reinforced concrete is concrete with fibres in it. It can be steel fibres, macro synthetic fibres or fine fibres. It doesn't matter which one it is, it's all called fibre reinforced concrete. The key is... The key is you need a product that's going to disperse in the concrete. You've probably all seen fibre concrete with balls of fibre in it. You don't want balls of fibre in the, in the concrete. That's basically either caused by poor mixing or poor procedures being followed, either by the concrete company or sometimes on site. People don't follow the right mixing procedures. I'm going to firstly talk about microfibres. Microfibers have been on the market for the last 40 years. Microfibers globally go into around about 50 million cubic metres of concrete every year. I'm going to show you uses of where you can put your mic microfibers and also what you should be looking for before you purchase that particular product. Microfibers are produced on plants whereby you melt the raw materials and then you extrude it up through spinnerets. So in that particular spinneret you've got 50,000 individual fibres. So on that particular plant that we've got in Belgium, you've got 200,000 fibres going up through a line, stretched, pulled out and chopped into different lengths. So if it's 18 micron or 32 micron fibre, the tolerance is that are plus or minus one micron. It's very, very accurate. It's not like slump of a concrete where you're already 120, it comes 70 one day, it might come 150 the next day. The tolerances are very, very tight. A microfiber, definition in the European standard, is less than 30 mi 30 point, well, 300 microns in diameter. So, but the typical products are typically anywhere between 15 to sort of 50 microns in diameter. It's just to cover everybody in Europe because in different countries you use different thicknesses for different applications. The other material that you're probably familiar with is in semi-dry screeds. There's a propensity to use fibrillated fibres. Again, it's less than 0 .300, well, 300 microns in diameter. But typically these are sort, sort of rectangular in shape and the average dimensions are between 100 and 150 microns. Just to give you an idea how it compares to human hair. Human hair is on the right hand side, monofilament on the left hand side and a fibrillated tape in the middle. So it's important that when you order fibres for concrete and sometimes it goes wrong, you order the wrong fibre for the job and then you complain to your concrete supplier or to us and tell them you've got a hairy finish on the concrete, you can't finish it, the concrete's unworkable. It's important to know which type of fibre you need for what particular application. You should also be looking for products produced with a C mark. In Europe, everybody has to use a C mark for a polypropylene or a steel fibre. In the UK, you still don't need a C mark. You don't need a C mark for plastic or steel fibres until 2013. But as a European and a global supplier, we would recommend that you make sure you've got C marks on every product before you use it in the concrete. For the microfibres, the benefits of putting these little plastic fibres in the concrete are reduces plastic shrinkage and settlement cracks. 
increased abrasion resistance. I think somebody asked a question earlier, how diamond creek compared to normal concrete. Well, there's been reports published, diamond creek is a very, very good product. Anything with microsilica is going to improve your abrasion resistance to concrete. A lot of these types of concretes also have polypropylene fibres in there because these types of concretes have a propensity to show plastic shrinkage cracks. And the reason for that is because there's less bleed in these types of concretes because they've got really, really fine powders. You've also got improved impact resistance. So a lot of external yards where you've got lorries going on these yards, you want to have the improved imp imp abrasion resistance where you've got lorries turning and slowing around. And also you want to prevent damage caused by dolly wheels and other damage caused by forklifts, picking up a pallet and dropping it on the slab. So these products are ideal for impact and abrasion resistance. Also quite controversially, but we've been doing this for the last 14 years, improve free store resistance. Adding plastic fibres into a good concrete, you put it in a rubbish concrete, you don't get any free store resistance. If you add plastic fibres, polypropylene microfibres, you improve your free store resistance of the concrete. We've been supplying fibres into about 500,000 cubic metres of concrete in this country just for that purpose. You can also get reduced water permeability because it reduces bleed channels developing in the concrete and if you've got less cracks you've got less penetration of liquids and water into your concrete. And lastly, probably the largest use of this type of fibre is to reduce explosive spoiling in concrete. So people think, well, concrete doesn't explode. We're having a look on, on here. And they've actually written a guide, the Concrete Society, about assessment, design and repair of fire damaged concrete structures. So there's lots of fires. Concrete explodes, it's damaged, you either have to repair it or you can use polypropylene fibre and it will reduce that damage. I'm going to show you a video clip of what happens to concrete exposed to a fire. So who amongst you thought that concrete were good at resisting fire? Anybody? <laughs> it's not. Just to prove that, this is the Gotthard Fire Tunnel in 2001. As you can see, all swathes of concrete explode away from the surface and you get structural failure. This is the Channel Tunnel Fire in 1996 and these dark areas that's the actual rock. So you've got the full thickness of the concrete, it exploded away from the surface and that covered an area of around about 50 linear metres. Interesting to note that actually the repair they did to it doesn't contain anything to protect, prevent that happening again. And the latest fire that occurred, they spent 50 million euros repairing it and didn't prevent that from happening again either. So they've repaired it with exactly the same type of materials that caused the problem in the first place. Luckily for you, and for me, if you channel, travel through the Channel Tunnel rail link between London and the Channel Tunnel, it contains polypropylene fibres. So there's approximately 700,000 cubic metres of concrete that had PP fibres in. The one on the right, these are tests done at the time by Ove Arabs in conjunction with uh, rail link engineering. The one on the right hand side is the same concrete as the one on the left. The one on the left has got one kilogram of microfibers in it. The explosive spalling on the right went to a depth of 130 millimetres in depth. The one on the le left, there's no spalling whatsoever. Our rail link engineering was probably the first major tunnel globally that went with this particular system. Since then, every tunnel in China, Hong Kong, Australia, North America, the UK and Europe is using microfibers to reduce explosive spalling. 
Also, if you look at Euro Code 2, there's a section in there for high rise buildings where you've got a compressive strength above a C60. They recommend you use a polypropylene fibre to reduce explosive spalling in case there's a fire within, within a building. <coughs> Potential areas of use where these particular fibres are used are refractories, high rise buildings. So we've done some jobs in conjunction with BASF, 